Happy Wednesday. Welcome back to the Lord and Arts channel. I'm John Lorden. Thank you so much for spending some time with us here today as we continue with additional information on the Sierra Breland lock layer case. I have been in contact with Luke. Uh, we've had a phone call, tons of text messages. So I've got some new details, including that critical information we were asking for in Friday's episode. I also want to give a very big thank you to everyone that's helped support that episode. We need more eyes and ears and hearts open and looking for Sierra. So thank you guys so much for sharing that in those states. We've got a lot of states that we're talking about there between Indiana and Georgia. We need to raise exposure on all of them. So what's the information that Luke gave me? Um, first of all, and I'm not sure if it's Xavier. I think it's actually Xavier based on some new media that I'm hearing about this. Thankfully, news organizations are starting to dig into this case a little bit as well. Uh, Xavier has one ex-wife and two kids that she has custody of. Uh, Sierra has one child, and that was the baby that was with them on the trip. And that baby is five months old. The other Xavier Breland that I mentioned in last week's episode is Xavier Breland Sr. That's actually Xavier's father. They are related. Uh, Sierra was last seen on Sunday, February 20th by her father at his house. Sierra was driving her car, which is a white 2017 Volkswagen Tiguan. Uh, I've got an image of one here. Let me go ahead and bring that up for you guys. And We've got the license plate number as well, RMB5869. So 2017 Volkswagen Tiguan. This is the car that would be taken back to Indiana. Um, now, Luke is saying here that he, re he returned to his house on Friday, February 25th with all of her phones, their months old baby, her credit cards, and her car. Um, what I'm a little concerned about is we've got this pretty big time frame that's going on here. And I don't know that the drive back to Indiana, was it all done in one shot or not? We have no idea. So in terms of raising exposure on this, we really need to look at that time frame from, it could be anywhere from Sunday 2.20 to when she's reported missing, because we know that he's certainly back in India, Indiana by then. So really it's that entire week. If you saw this vehicle, once again, license plate RMB5869, and that it would be a state of Georgia plate. On top of that, you might remember it for having a license plate frame for Florida state law. Now, I've only found two examples of this online. This is one of them here, red background, Florida state on the bottom part and law on the top. And this kind of silver version with a black background on the text, Florida State University on the bottom and law on top. It might be a variation. I'm not sure if either of these examples is an exact match, but a Florida State law license plate frame on this Volkswagen with RMB 5869 for um, Georgia State. Luke tells me that she also had three cell phones. There is a third cell phone. There's the personal cell phone, the burner phone, and a work phone. So that might help explain why we had the company that she worked for make that statement publicly where they were saying that they were assisting the authorities. Uh, hopefully that assisting is opening up their phone records because um, if she had that phone with her, if it was on, possibly another form of tracing that could be going on with that phone. Uh, Luke also says that she hasn't spoke to us since she left her father's house on February 20th. My sister texted her on Monday, the 21st, and got no response from Sierra, and that's not normal. So technically, she went missing on the 20th. So it's a little bit different from the information we put out in Friday's video. It sounded like there was some form of communication on Tuesday. That's kind of in question now. Uh, what we certainly know is they're 100% sure they know that she was fine on Sunday, the 20th. Everything the week after that, um, I kind of feel like is is up in the air and we really should be kind of treating it like that. Uh, also, we had a tipster that reached out, shared some information with us. We have passed that along to the authorities. I've also passed it along to Luke. 
I just want to thank that tipster for doing that. Um, and we really need that type of information to keep coming in. So if there's any reason why you can't be the one to pick up that phone, use the contact information that's in the description box down below. If you need to contact me, please contact me one way or another. We need to get this information collected and into the hands of the people that can act on it. But once again, a big thank you to that tipster. Some other social information has come out. Um, I've learned a little bit more about Xavier. Xavier is a truck driver. We're also seeing some mention of that in some of the articles that are coming out now. Um, it does seem that a search was conducted on his mother's home. Several items were taken from the home. Uh, it sounds like electronics, possibly some type of camera or surveillance system as well. I'm also hearing that Xavier and his mother are extremely close kind of raises a question, um, you know, would she cover for him if she knew something had happened or something along those lines? Basically, in my experience of looking at these cases and in and more particular, the cases that we cover on Case Cracked, it's very, very rare for a parent to not, uh, I, I, I wouldn't say cover necessarily, but they, they're not going to help an investigation typically. Um, that's coming after one of their children. I just, I, I don't see that happen. Uh, I don't know that I've ever seen it happen. I don't know that that's what's going on here. I'm just talking about, um, you know, things that we've seen on the channel here previously. So uh, let's continue with a couple of articles on updates here as we hear what new resources might be joining the search. Starting here at WRTV.com, FBI. FBI assisting Carmel police in investigation into women's disappearance. The Federal Bureau of Investigation offices in Indianapolis and Atlanta are assisting local police. Very, very good to hear that. Uh, and it's great to get this federal level of involvement. If a crime has been conducted here, there's a chance that it might have moved across state lines. I think it's great to get the FBI involved very early on in that. And knowing that they have resources that they can easily hoop in if something else happens in one of those other states in between. Um, I just, I think that's a really good position to be in. And I'm glad to hear that they're joining this case so early. I mean, we typically don't hear about, hear that with a missing persons investigation that's less than, you know, a full two weeks old. Johns Creek police say they're following up on various leads and asking the community pr to provide any and every piece of information to them. Thankfully, we have some members of the press starting to dig in on this case, and we're getting some additional information. Over at fox5atlanta.com, we're gonna learn a little bit more about Xavier. He was arrested back in June by the Noonan Police Department on charges of aggravated stalking. It was not clear if the current warrant hold was related to the previous charge. A grand jury indicted him on those aggravated stalking charges in December. This is not the first legal trouble he's been in. Sources told uh, Fox 5 News that he had had warrants associated with harassing phone calls and violating a family violence order. In 2007, court records indicate he was arrested in Florida and extradited to Indiana on a fugitive warrant. So uh, what he's going through right now seems like he's been through at least once before. He also has several citations related to his relating to his time as a trucker. Breland has also operated his own car detailing business. So remember all those speeding tickets that we were bumping into? Sounds like that was from his time as a trucker. What about uh, Sierra? Where is Sierra? Sierra was reported missing by her husband over the weekend. He told police around 10 p.m. on February 25th, he last saw her leave the house in the Brookstone Park of Carmel subdivision possibly headed to the area CVS store. Now, I, I've seen that CVS store reference only a few times. Uh, I'm not sure where it's coming from. I, I have to assume it's coming from the official missing persons report, but it, I haven't seen it really on any of the posters or anything. Uh, family members said police told them she never arrived there and there was no surveillance video of her entering the store, which we did understand last week, whatever store she was going to, they checked it and there was no camera footage of her actually arriving there. Uh, Sierra's husband is not the only avenue that they're exploring to try to find out what happened to her. We have a quote from Lieutenant Kalish here. It's not just him. We're looking at every place that we can possibly find her. Continuing at 11alive.com, baby of missing mom, now with child services. 
Uh, a spokesperson with Coweta County Sheriff's Office provided details on the warrants. So more information about these. Well, we've heard about the previous charges. We're getting an understanding there. We've got some domestic violence related issues, uh, stalking charges. It seems like related to, uh, I, I believe it's his previous wife. Now we're going to get some details on the warrants that they're currently holding him on. Uh, it includes two misdemeanor charges for harassing phone calls and family violence order violation and a felony warrant for failure to appear for aggravated stalking. So one of the things I've also heard is their move to Indiana was recent, I think only within the past few months. And there's articles that are saying it was because she was going to work at a new firm kind of the social information I'm hearing is it wasn't really about that necessarily as much as it was about Xavier getting away from his problems in Georgia. Uh, and I don't know that they mean like, you know, he was trying to skip out and not show up at court, but we're hearing here that that's kind of what did happen. If he, he has a felony warrant for failure to appear. Um, and it's on the aggravated stalking charge. Uh, based on what I'm hearing, it was more about getting him out of the situation where he was getting into that type of trouble over and over. But once again, that's social information. That's, that's not reported here in the news sources. Back to the news source. Another quote from Lieutenant Kalish. It's a mom with a young child. As a mom, I can't imagine leaving behind my baby. So yes, we're taking it very seriously, as is the police department in Indiana. We're concerned. We're looking for her. Over at fox59.com, Georgia Police Department details involvement. One question we sort of had lingering from last Friday's video is how did they exactly get hooped in for this investigation to kick off in Georgia? We've got a pretty direct answer here. Um, once again, Lieutenant Kalish detailed how the department got involved in the case. We were contacted by the Carmel Police Department in reference to Sierra and going to a location here in Johns Creek that she had just recently visited with her husband, said Kalish. They're not reporting this, but I believe that is his mother's home that they're talking about in Johns Creek. While tracking, while tracking down any leads they could, the Carmel Police Department decided to take a look where they had recently been. This was the last place that they were before they went back home to Indiana, and he had reported Sarah missing, said Kalish. So I don't know if they were maybe just um, not taking his information at face value, but uh, they kind of took it one step back from that and said, okay, he says that she was here on Friday night, but we're not 100% sure where were they known to be before that. That is what led them back out to uh, Georgia and I believe to his mother's house. Over at WSB TV, uh, Mark Winnie here has finally dug into the court records. We get a little more insight into what some of those older charges are about and some concerning aspects of them, one very concerning aspect in particular. When he found loads of documents of interest on Monday, which contained serious allegations against Xavier Breland involving another woman, stalking, and more. Some of the time it appears Sierra Locklear was his attorney. This is the first place I've seen that. Sierra was actually acting as his attorney for some of the stuff that was going on with these charges. Quote, she was not a family law practitioner, and you could just see that she was in a bad spot having to defend someone that was not a nice person, attorney Donato Dan Palumbo said. Palumbo said he represents an alleged victim, the mother of two of Xavier Breland Jr.'s children, in civil cases that began before Sierra Locklear Breland's disappearance. What is your client's level of fear concerning Breland Jr.? She feels that without help, she could be missing or dead, Palumbo says. So I believe this is the ex, I believe it's an ex-wife of Xavier's. And effectively, she's saying that with without being protected, and from what I saw, there was protection orders that were also going on back then, uh, that she could have wound up missing or dead. Very, very concerning, especially with the situation that we're looking at here with Sierra. A gen but it gets just, unfortunately, a touch worse. A January 2021 order by Fulton County Judge Alexandra Manning found that Xavier Breland represents a credible threat to the physical safety of plaintiff, of 
to, so we're talking about to his ex-wife, a document from the alleged victim's side suggested Breland on or about February of 2019 informed her that he would bury her in front of their minor children. He denies telling the, peti the petitioner that he will bury her in front of the kids. If that threat is real, um, very big concern in Sierra's case, which quite honestly, I know a lot of us were already worried uh, about something of that nature, but it, it's a whole different thing when you're finding information that ties to, to that fear so closely. Thankfully, we also have Fox 5 Atlanta putting out the information on the vehicle, including the plate. Uh, we can see it here. The couple was driving a white 2017 Volkswagen Tiguan with Georgia tag RMB5869 and an FSU law school frame surrounding that license plate. Uh, the burner phone. Why did she have a burner phone? Here at Fox 5, they say family members said she had that burner phone to contact them in case of an emergency. Just a little bit more clarification on it. You know, originally we had heard that uh, he was just extremely controlling when it came to her personal phone. So she had to have this kind of other phone. Um, but this article is being a little more direct that she was literally, she literally had it in case of an emergency. I mean, what kind of emergency are we, are we talking about here? It seems like it would be something possibly related to, uh, Xavier on the same day that Xavier Breland said his wife, Sierra went missing. The Coweta County courts were revoking his bond on an aggravated stalking charge filed by the Noonan police department. According to court records, Breland had an arraignment on that charge on February 23rd. The next day, a bench warrant was issued for his arrest, and by Friday, the court was working to void his bond. This is kind of interesting. I'm wondering if they had actually traveled there. I mean, it sounds like obviously they were visiting family, but during this trip, we also happen to have an arraignment date scheduled for him on some of these previous charges for Wednesday, and she's acting as his attorney in these matters. She's there with him. But for some reason, he doesn't show up on that Wednesday. And then his bond gets revoked. Uh, I don't know. But in terms of, of our timeline, um, it seems very concerning. It, it seems like something something goes wrong early on, in, earlier on in that week. Um, I, I just, I don't know. I, I'm certain she wouldn't advise him to miss that. And especially if he's got family out there, he wants to be able to travel back and forth. You don't want to have to, you know, you have an active warrant in that state where you're going to visit your mom. That doesn't, um, I don't know. I don't know. It's, it seems kind of strange that, and, and outside of that, we're talking about another potential stressor. Like there's, there's this court thing that's going on while they're out there, while they're visiting this family. I don't know, guys, very, very concerned about this. Also, a little bit of information. I don't know if this really ties to it. Uh, I just want to thank the people over at Web Sleuths, um, keeping an eye on the thread there on this case. They noted that over at WTHR here, they reported that some clothing was found near that CVS that is local to the home. Uh, remember, she was last seen wearing a black top and purple shorts, which wouldn't make sense to go out in 20 degree weather. 13 News learned Friday that a man found a black shirt and shorts similar to what police say Breland, Breland was wearing at the time of her disappearance. The man said he found the clothing Sunday afternoon off South Waterleaf Drive behind the CVS pharmacy and a daycare just off of Ditch Road in Carmel. That location is just a half mile north of where Breland was last seen. 13 News has not confirmed if these are Breland's clothes, but the man said police confiscated them as possible evidence. One of the things they pointed out pointed out over at Web Sleuths, which I agreed with as soon as I saw this photo, those are not purple shorts. Outside of that, I don't know, these kind of strike me as clothing possibly, uh, I, I don't know, that a man could wear. I, I suppose a woman could wear them as well. Uh, we haven't heard anything about any logos or sayings being on the clothing that she went missing in, but of course, consider the source of that information. We don't know if any of that clothing description is right at all. And then you have people talking about the possibility of maybe he would have dropped that description of the clothing and then went and dropped some clothing like that in the area to kind of throw off the investigation in some way. Um, if he is involved in it, something along those lines. 
I don't know. I'm, I'm not 100% sure. But people are curious, uh, has he been extradited yet? And here at Hamilton County, I'm just going to do a refresh just to make sure. Um, it doesn't look like it. His record looks like he is actually still in Hamilton County, Indiana. Uh, they're still noting it's for warrant arrests from out of state. No changes, no updates that have happened here as of yet. That's the latest on this case. Remember, we're still looking for that help out there. We've got all the contact information that you need in the description box down below. But outside of that, if you need to contact me for any reason, please do. Go to lordandarts.com. There's a comment form right down at the bottom of the website there. It's very easy uh, to get a hold of me in that way. So <sighs> just hoping for the best outcome here for the Locklear family. Um, I'm hoping that they find Sierra very, very soon in all this. And uh, we'll keep you guys updated here on the channel. I'll be back on Friday with a new episode of Brain Scratch right here on the Lord and Arch channel. Thank you.